Hello and welcome. It's been a long time since I uploaded a video, but here I am planning a new series on positional play and complex endgames. It's something that I always wanted to do, and since I don't have much time these days for full game reviews, I will try instead to analyze some interesting positions and try to understand them with the help of the engine. I hope you will find these videos instructive and improve your chess strength. So let's jump right in. In this position, black just played bishop b7 and we need to find now a good move for white. In order to be able to do that, first we need to evaluate the position and try to understand it. The material is equal and they both have two pawn islands divided by the open and shared c file. Both of them should consider winning this file for themselves at some point, if possible. Both kings are safe, white's minor pieces are pretty good, they are all active, deployed to good squares, having a strong influence in the center of the board. Black's minor pieces are also good. The bishop on b7 is not very active at the moment, but it defends the e4 square and black may be able to activate it later on. White has a strong d4 pawn defending the e5 and c5 squares where white could potentially land a piece one day. Both are very nice squares, but there is a big difference between the two. White may be able to land the piece successfully on e5, but black still has the option to play f6 and drive that piece away. On the other hand, c5 is a weak square in black's territory. It's an outpost, a square defended by a pawn and which cannot be attacked by any of the opponent's pawns. That's why it is a weakness for black. A white piece could potentially stay on that square for a long time without the possibility of chasing it away. Black, on the other hand, has the d5 and b5 pawns defending the e4, c4 and a4 squares in white's territory. None of these squares are an outpost though, so all in all, thanks to the slightly better pieces and outpost on c5, the position is somewhat better for white. So what are some good ideas in this position? One of the better moves for white is to place one of the rooks on the open c file. One positional concept is to occupy an open file and try to dominate it with the idea of infiltrating deeply into the opponent's territory. Preventing the opponent from doing the same is of course also important. Other ideas are to occupy central squares, weakened squares, create new weaknesses and dissolve the opponent's strong squares. With these ideas in mind, besides moving a rook to c1, we should also consider knight e5. In many cases, not in this one, but in many cases, moving a knight to e5 allows white to expand on the king side. It allows the queen to come out and attack, or if black exchanges the knight, then e5 can be occupied by another piece or a pawn. For example, if black would play rook e8 here, instead of exchanging the knight, then after f4, white would be happy to take back on e5 with the f-pawn because now the knight would have to move away from his very good defensive position and the f-file could be used for an attack. Here bishop takes on h7 would be already possible with an unstoppable mate to follow in a couple of moves. In this particular position though, knight e5 is not a good move because after the exchange of knights, it is true that the knight is driven away from his beloved f6 square, however y doesn't really have an attack here. And now the e5 pawn is attacked. Queen h5 can be easily parried with g6 and black wins e5. Also the gain d4 square is not really of great use for white because the knight is not getting there quickly and white doesn't have a dark squared bishop either. So after knight d7 white needs to play f4 and his position is not that great as it was before knight e5. Black has ideas like knight c5 and if white retreats his strong bishop then black can try b4, a5 and activate his light squared bishop via the a6 square. 
So 95 is not that great, but how about the outpost on c5? Can white occupy it somehow with a piece? A maneuver with the knight like this, or via d2, is too time consuming in this dynamic position. Sometimes if the position is closed, then lengthy maneuvers like these are good, but here it is more important to keep an eye on the center because the position can change very quickly. After the knight moves from f3, black can play e5 with good prospects. If white takes on e5, then there's no outpost anymore on c5. The other knight could potentially jump to c5 via e4 or a4, but that doesn't seem possible at the moment since both squares are guarded by black pawns. Sometimes playing e4 and trying to push e5 or uh, win over the e4 square for a white piece if black takes is a good idea. But here it fails to pawn takes, knight takes, and knight takes on d4 and black wins a pawn. So e4 is out of the question, but how about the a4 square? It's currently guarded by the pawn on b5, but can white challenge black's control of a4? He has the bishop and the queen nicely lined up against the b5 pawn. The knight is also attacking it, but as long as the pawn on a6 defends b5, there's not much white can do with only the pieces. But white can attack b5 also with a pawn, forcing black to make a concession. He can defend the pawn adequately, and taking on a4 would allow the knight access to a4 and from there to c5. So best for black is to push b4, forcing the knight to retreat. This seems to, to win some time for black, but the knight might eventually get to c5 anyway via d2 and b3. Here a careless move, often made by less experienced players, is a5, trying to defend the pawn on b4 as soon as possible and also trying to move the a pawn out of harm's way. But this is not a good move. It not only gives up the b5 square to white, but the knight, once it gets to b3, it will be spoiled for choice. The knight might stay on b3 and continuously attack a5, forcing a black piece into defense, always a good idea, or it might also jump to c5 when the time comes. The a pawn must stay on a6, guard b5, and also allow the black knight to jump to a5 and deny the other knight the b3 square. Black could continue here with knight e4, supported by pawn and bishop, and if white ever takes, then the scope of black's light squared bishop will be extended one square, and black also gains the d5 square for a piece. And this wouldn't be the same situation as a, a few moves back when the white knight jumped to e5 and after the exchange of knights white ended up with a weak pawn on e5. This time black's e4 pawn would be defended by the bishop and the bishop would also stay excellently on d5. And if white challenges the e4 pawn with f3, then after pawn takes the light squared bishop is even stronger. However, after knight e4, the game could continue with rook c1 instead, and white would still maintain a small advantage. For example, thanks to the attack on a6, black can't really oppose so easily on the c file. So, going back, a4 is a good move for white, but the alternative played in the game, rook c1, is also good. And it's now time to find something good for black too. First of all, b4 is not good because this would allow white to play knight a4 again and get to the outpost on c5. Black should also finish development by connecting the rooks and also think about using the e4 and c4 squares. So knight a5 is one idea. The knight could go from here to c4 at some point. And knight a5 also allows the bishop to defend the e4 square, making knight e4 possible. But now that the knight is not attacking the e4, it is important to consider white's e4 move. Well, 
it still doesn't work out well for white because after the exchange of a lot of minor pieces white ends up with an isolated pawn on d4 and not much to show for it so knight a5 e4 black is playable and is good another idea is queen e7 or queen d6 connecting the rooks and then black can proceed with moves like rook f8 or rook c8 and knight a5 and sometimes even push e5 threatening to fork these pieces and if white takes the pawn then c5 is no longer an outpost for white and black may even play d4 at some point and open his light squared bishop in the game black played knight e7 which didn't achieve anything now a4 is even stronger because the black knight cannot go to a5 anymore after b4 and knight back to b1 Black's best move is actually knight back to c6 to stop the white knight from getting to b3. After knight e7, white played knight d2 with the idea knight b3 and knight c5. With the knight on c6, black could have played here e5 and if white would take the pawn then again the knight getting to c5 wouldn't be that dangerous anymore. But it's still not too late knight back to c6 is again black's best here because black needs to fight against that knight coming to c5 and also needs to activate his light squared bishop after knight b3 e5 and knight c5 black can play either queen b6 or bishop back to c8 and black is fine he's threatening the pawn on d4 white can defend tactically here with queen d2 now if the pawn takes, e takes on d4 and knight takes, white would have bishop takes on a7, king takes, queen takes on d4, and black has a weak isolated pawn on d5. But instead of e takes on d4, black can just play rook e8 or queen d6 and keep the options open with the e pawn. Instead pushing the pawn to e4, wouldn't be so good because it would solidify the knight's position on c5. So this is all for today. If you enjoyed it, consider subscribing and you will be notified of more content like this. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye.